front of the camera and then like stop and make it look super cool. But yeah, I had to give that up. Hey guys, today we're talking about ceramides. Also, I wanted to add before we move into this video, if you use and love a ceramide product, list it in the comments below because I think we've got a really great group going here and a lot of you guys are super knowledgeable. So if you've got something that you're loving that you think works, list it in the comments below. Let's jump in. You've probably heard them. Lots of people want them. They're important. First off, where are ceramides located? In the stratum corneum, in the intercellular cement. Remember the Legos? Ceramides are the most prevalent lipid in the intercellular cement. They make up about 40 to 60%. There are at least eight kinds of ceramides and they all play different important roles. Sometimes you'll see them classified like this, or sometimes you'll see them classified like this. We'll talk more about that later. They also occur naturally in other parts of the body. They have an important role in the structure of the skin. So one of their most important jobs is keeping water in, but also keeping water out. Natural sources include wheat germ, rice bran, soy, dairy, spinach, cranberry, safflower, just to name a few. Without their presence in the intercellular cement in the stratum corneum, your skin can become dry and cracked. Ceramides, what can you do for me? Well, I can repair dry skin by way of repairing the stratum corneum. I can also improve skin hydration and add to skin softening. Wow. So, I mean, like, what kind of skin types do you like? Stressed, sensitive, scaly, rough, dry, aged, and sun damaged. Now that you know ceramides on a more personal level, let's jump into talking about skincare. So the first and obvious thing is that you can topically apply ceramides to your skin, but you can also orally ingest them. Let's break down each way and what their benefits, kind of what their pros and cons might be. So first, when you talk about ceramides and skincare, let's break it down into subcategories. First, there are how your ceramides are being derived. Are they from plants? animals or are they synthetically made next would be what are your ceramides suspended in that kind of brings up some questions because it's like because there are so many different types of ceramides and because they're commonly put in creams it's not always clear what the benefits are sometimes it's a little bit muddy in the research what are the benefits? Is it the benefit of having a cream on your face or is it actually the ceramides? So what we do know is applying them to your skin is a good thing. However, it's not an exact science. I wanna to read to you a clip from one of the research articles that I found. The lack of commercially availability of skin identical ceramides at a reasonable cost also continues to be a problem. Admittedly existing in vitro data, some animal studies, and limited human data support potential benefits for the use of ceramides in human skincare. However, these benefits will remain unexploited unless more extensive and critical data can show that ceramides or their natural precursors deliver clinical and consumer perceived skin benefits. So there you go right there. Um, I think from what I found is it's a, it's a little bit of a gray area when it comes to ceramides. Um, and it definitely goes back to consumer perceived skin benefits. So I read a really great article called, um, on a website called Beauty in the Brains and what they recommended, which I thought was a fabulous point, was that if you are interested in ceramides, say you have dry skin, um, would be to start cheap and then work your way up to see what was effective. Let's talk about some examples of ceramides and skincare. First I have this Garden of Wisdom. It just happened amazing skincare hydrator. That's what it looks like. I'll link it below. Okay, so it contains aloe vera gel, hyaluronic acid, sodium PCA, and ceramide compounds, as well as luc lucidal SF. So it's got a lot of great ingredients. It's very hydrating to the skin. It has some great things inside it. Could I say that the skin benefits are from the ceramides? Well, maybe, but it's, it's suspended in aloe vera gel. It also has hyaluronic acid. So it's tough to say what the benefits are really coming from. Let's take another product. I've had this for quite a while and I can't throw it away because it's, it's still quite full. 
although there are some sketchy ingredients in here. So it claims to contain ceramides. It's all the way down here on this huge list of ingredients, right there. Although it's one of the selling points of this cream that it contains ceramides. Well, what does it also contain? Shea butter, colloidal oatmeal, it also has dimethicone. In the end, what are the benefits that I would be receiving from this cream? Would it be the fact that it has colloidal oatmeal in it and that's the active ingredient? Would it be that it's a cream and an occlusive and holding moisture to the skin? Or could you say that it's the ceramides? However, they point out that there's ceramides in this product. So, so what I really wanna point out is there's quite a bit of gray area here. Now let's talk about what I think is really the most interesting thing, and that is taking ceramides internally. So you could take wheat germ, wheat germ oil, rice bran oil, cranberries. So there are some studies that say potentially that taking it orally can be just or more effective than applying it topically. So I find that very interesting. And my takeaway from this whole video was that I ordered wheat germ to put in my smoothies. <laughs> One other thing I wanted to talk about was something called precursors. So ceramides um, inside the intercellular cement are made in the stratum corneum. There's a whole super cool biochemical process going on in the stratum corneum. That's why sometimes when you hear people say that it's dead, mm, some of us go like this a little bit because there's a lot happening still in the stratum corneum. So some of the things that can be precursors like the chocolate chips to a chocolate chip cookie are things like vitamin C, vitamin D, lactic acid, plant oils that are high in linoleic acid. I might be saying that wrong. All those ingredients are very prevalent in skincare right now. Vitamin C, lactic acid, plant oils. <laughs> and so I think that will segue really nicely. Um, it will be a very, in my opinion, like next step would be to talk about linoleic and oleic oils. Um, that plays a huge role in our skin's moisture and acne, and um, it plays a huge role, I think, in green beauty. Something that would be really fun to talk about that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. Now, when you see products being advertised with ceramides in it, you know what they're talking about, and you've got a little bit in your mind to help you sift through the hype. So.